So what do you guys think? You want to check out a little bit of that demo reel here that I that I did that I worked on, and then afterwards we check uh, Enrage by Boom because this is I just have we I just want to fool around and explore this thing with you guys because there is so much you can do. Eventually I will fail a few times because it can really get that complex. I still have to fully understand it. You know, Axel is like, I mean, I'm not that horrible actually, but you know, it's like. Um, I will probably call him like a few times a week and says, well, how, how do you do this? What is this? What, what is this button? You know, like, like a little boy. But I think that's cool. There's nothing better to be excited about music, about music uh, gear. Okay, so let's turn off a little bit of that music here. And I would say I just move over to, to Cubase here. I also like reworked. I'm just very small right now so i just made it a little bit you know more convenient without having like a like an absolutely hardcore frame you know so you can see my face when i'm cursing around that something happened and um i would like to play you that thing here so pl be, please be aware the sound effects and everything i'm not really sure if i i mean i think pavel, pavel would be okay if i just play play the sound design a little bit but i just want to give you the full picture and actually the sound is i said I, it's not like the final video right so i did this i i worked on that track on this on this reel and then uh later on there was a little bit of fine tuning but actually i can you know post the link later in the chat so you can check out the full reel um so let me just play that with uh let's open my um video player right so let's check out what this uh, how this what it does what what's happening here so let's let moves this like let me put it like here so you can see a little bit of both worlds okay so let's check this out here so i just want to add um the special effects also so you get like an idea of the whole thing Yay, that's it. So it worked out. Yeah, that CPU meter. I don't even know what is going on here right now. Look at this. This is scary. <laughs> I just probably have to put like I will be I will be careful and just put like where is it? Um was it called nine ice nine or something? Why is the oh here it is. 
I just I will probably just put that in here just to prevent anything from happen. But just in case if there is some bus happening or something, I don't know what's going on here. Well, it's Cubase, you know. Huh? Um, I should probably check the buffer size. That's right. So it's 512, so it should be totally fine. Shouldn't do anything. Um, okay, so <clears throat> if you want, we can go over what I was doing for, for the track. You know, track by track. So I just want to act deactivate the, the um, sound effects here and close the player because now you know what's roundabout going on here. So um, there's a lot of layering ha actually happening. You also see that I've used some, um, you know, just some, you know, you see like some MIDI lines. So I just used some, for example, like that little repro uh, arpeggio here. But I just want to do that because I just want to show you how, how I layer these sounds. And even though sometimes uh, stuff have to go fast, stuff has to go, you know, gives you some kind of an imagination. But I don't want to simply go in there and just layer it with just one sound. So I just came up with the idea of layering this sound. So it's basically this repeating loop. And if you're interested, I can just quickly get into that. I loaded this multipass thing here on it and Valhalla super massive. So if I just play that back without these effects, it sounds like this. So I put that, you know, that, that, that I just fooled around a little bit. You know, the, the reason that, that I should probably talk about this. Uh, first, the reason why I came up with the idea that I came up with is if you look at the style, and, and we talked about this, it looks, especially the, the, the astronaut, or, or how do you call it, like the, you know, the pilot, um, it doesn't really look like some, I mean, it's like a, here, it's like a mixture of a modern, you know, style, but if you look at it more closely and you look at like all these things, it looks even older like Star Wars, like the first Star Wars. So we just wanted to come up with something that looks like something, or not we, I mean, uh, Andras, who, who did the video, uh, so uh, who, who, did, who did all the CGI stuff. And um, he wanted to come up with something that, that is like a modern mix, but also like a mix from the 60th. 60s so or 70s better so that's why i came up with mixing not really or not using orchestra in that sense to make it like really movie like but lots of um lots of synth lots of plugins but also wanted to mangle them through stuff that is quite modern you know because back then you had like am uh, analog synth and you were able to play some stuff and of course you had your lfos and oscillators and stuff like this but you weren't really able to just put like hey let's put multipass on that let's let's fool around let's automate some stuff um so i just wanted to do that you know to do that mix um, of these elements so if we put on if you turn on multipass it sounds like this here <laughs> So it all, almost creates like a little percussion loop, but it's not really percussion, it's still that synth sound. And also lots of Valhalla, which by the way, uh, sorry, super massive, which by the way is free, just in case if you never heard of this plugin, what I don't really believe. Um, so. so it's like super long echoes and, and basically the entire score is very, very reverbish if, if you want to say so so next up is and i just want to do an entire feature of pigments because it's just such an awesome synth and i'm just kind of like late to the show because i have never really gotten into it you know so i feel that pigments especially and there is one specific sound set by seed audio that i want to feature soon and, and also like in one session um it's when you look at these uh, sounds, it looks like everything is in there, what you don't find in other synth. So, I mean, of course, if you are a synth crazy guy, like a synth nerd, and I would play you that patch, you would say like, oh man, you can do that with every synth. Of course you can, but if you're just looking for inspiration,
so this is the patch that I came up with. And what I also did was putting a little bit of KHS filter on it and also a little bit of shimmer. And when I just bypassed it, it sounds like this. So I just wanted to just apply a little bit of cutoff that it's not like, you know, getting rid of everything above whatever, I don't know. Yeah, one kilohertz. So it doesn't interfere with all the other stuff that is around. And then a little bit of Valhalla shimmer on top. Which again creates kind of like that, let's say like that, um, like that uh, plate, plate kind of reverb. But I just wanted to do something else than just a plate, you know. So most of the time it's like I'm looking forward to do something that is like fulfilling something that is doing something but not what i would use to 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 uh to pick so for example simple example i could explain it better with an example if i just want to have a plate i'm not loading a plate plugin but something else that sounds a little bit different but can emulate kind of like a plate sound but um you know because shimmer has this specific character um like all of these reverb plugins, I mean, these design reverb plugins, if you want to say so, uh, introduce something different. Uh, I'm, I'm really actually, I'm sad because I didn't have enrage to the, to that, to that time when I was doing the, um, doing, uh, doing the music for this reel here, for this short. Um, because it actually, I think I, I'm not really sure when I started working on this, but it has been a few weeks in production. Um, okay. So, the next thing I have here right in the front is this patch. I mean, I don't... Just let me know. Hey, Bernie, how are you? Oh, let me just greet some people. Hey, Baraldi man. What's my buffer size? Oh, we we talked about this. Sorry, I'm getting old. Um, yeah, so I would just talk about a few patches. If you think this is boring or anything, let me know. If you think this is interesting, whatever. Just shoot some questions. Just let me know. So the next thing is we have a bass pulse here. And... Um, I also have to do a little bit of, you know, shameless, not self-promotion, but um, Unfinished, the Unfinished, who's like, probably know this guy, Matt Baudler, um, who is creating all kinds of cool synth patches. And this is this patch Substrata, or Substrata, however you want to pronounce it. And there is some really awesome stuff going on. It kind of sounds, sounds modern, but then it's, this this rough repro one synth by Yuhi, and this is what I came up with here. Pretty simple patch, no processing. I just had to check it. So, all these three things create this sound. And then, of course, as the video proceeds, as you see the the surface of the, the planet, you know, I just wanted to introduce some. Some soft Brahms here. It's a typical, you know, kind of like 80s Stranger Things in this sense, or even if it's like a. I mean, it doesn't really like Stranger Things. Doesn't make sense here because it's it's alien, it's extraterrestrial. We are probably on Mars or whatever problem, uh, on whatever planet. And um, but I felt it's it gives that it gives that vintage character a little bit. So I just put a little bit of an. Let me just turn this off. And the sample is not that long, so I just put a little bit of, or actually a lot of shimmer on top, so... So it's, like, it's, it's kind of like a modern version of that mysterious, what is going on right now? At least I felt like this. So, uh, we have this one here. Um, what actually took a lot of time no, the guitars are probably down here somewhere. There's a bit going on. So we have, uh, right, we have another repro melody, but I did something special to this. It's it's almost, you don't even hear it in the track. And I put a chopper, a chopper on top. This is a Steinberg plugin. I was surprised because when when I introduced the, shop, the chopper in my last YouTube video, 
in my very last one, um, I, somebody wrote me, it's like saying, thanks, hey, I'm using Cubase for years, but I wasn't even aware that the chopper is in there. So this is another, I mean, that happens to me too. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing or something, but it's just a sign of just, if you use a software, just make sure what is in there. You know, if you just get Studio One or Cubase or whatever, just check out all the synth, all <clears throat> the plugins and libraries that come with it. Sometimes there are really great uh, gems in this. And... Um, I really love the chopper for this. So I came up, basically I played this melody here and there is some little, you know, mod wheel automation going on, but I rendered this to audio and then applied the chopper on top and I ramped it up towards the end. This is the melody and it sounds like this. <clears throat> So you see what's happening right now that the mod wheel moved. I'm always trying to point to the screen like like this, but I also have a mouse. I mean, come on. So there is some mod wheel going up. You know, there's a little bit of a filter opens a little bit. So I just rendered it to audio probably. I don't know. Maybe I just wanted to save that because it sounded different once in a while or I don't know just to go sure maybe the chopper doesn't work on midi so anyway i rendered this to audio real quickly and then i applied the chopper on that sound and it sounds like this So I love doing this stuff and you hardly <clears throat> can't you you hardly hear it when you're just playing back that part. So with everything else that is that is chopped up during this, you know, during this part, it sounds pretty cool. And also, um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like shameless self promo. Here's a little library that I did. Look at this, isn't that awesome? So, and um, now I think I changed. No, I didn't. So what this basically is, I created this library out of my um, drummer from another mother, mother the Moke. It's it's somewhere here behind. You probably know the one. Let me just sw quickly switch. So this one here, it's such an awesome synth because it sounds like, um, you know, it's not really percussion, but it's not really, of course you can do synth lines and arpeggios and everything, but it's completely analog. You even have to stretch the tempo to get it right because you will never get 80, 80 or, or whatever BPM you're looking for, you get that right. And I did a little processing, you know, time stretching and, and looping correctly. And I just came up with that little library and it does something like this. So when you move the mod wheel, So this is another part that is going on. This is all, all parts that is going on for this. So th this is what I forgot to introduce. So this, I like that full part sounds. So, and so on, you heard it a few times. I would just post the link and, and you can listen to the full thing again if you're just interested. What also happened, and this is, um, you know why I'm not doing stuff like this in, in, in Studio One. What happened is that I received the reel, right? And it started here somewhere. I think here. So when you open, <clears throat> when you work in Studio One and you import a video, you get into the problem that you don't see the video file. It's just somewhere. It starts at the beginning. So now if you get a new video, with like this black thing here added in the beginning, 
you just have to either move the video which is the easiest thing or you have to move the entire music or you have to cut something from the video depending if it's shorter or longer and stuff like this so this is really a pain in Studio One to just drag this stuff around because you don't see the actual file. So that's why I really hope that the guys, um, the Presonus team comes up with a solution for this. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm in, uh, still in, on Cubase when it comes to video. What I also did in the beginning, you heard that little loop here, that little string patch. It's just an Arcus patch. And I came up with that because we quickly needed something in front of the video because it was longer. Uh, we had to shift the music. There was a lot of timing changes happening, like they always happen. You know, it's like you get that video. We we probably don't change something on the timing. And then suddenly you're getting like the new edit and it's, it's completely different. So in the beginning, I just had to insert something because I wanted to start the action, uh, you know, on that point when you see the planet, when you just see the ship. This is what I wanted to start the music. And so we just had this little thing on in front before that, you know, with that nice. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so thanks for all your help. Um, I'm just reading that all video rendering is causing it. No, it was just really actually the... The stealth, I really love that stealth limiter here for because it's just awesome. But when you put that to ISPL 16, now it seems to work. But I don't need that, you know. Um, it always says like intersample. Intersample peak limiting is probably the process. So you can turn this off. You can say 4x or 16x and it's, it's really intense. You hear a little bit of a different. Everything sounds a little bit richer and smoother. But I mean for, you know, probably the sound compression on uh, Twitch totally falsifies the picture anyway or the sound hey dean how are you um kyle that's cool i would love to start playing with synth a bit more where would be a sensible place to start um to be honest there are so many great free synth out there you can get uh you know that that guy by you he is called Podolsky, like the, the football player, the German football player. And um, there, I mean, just look at look at KVR something. You'd see like a like a complete section with synth and all synth that are, that are free. Uh, so you just get a feeling. Or do you do you actually talking about hardware synth? Let me know if you just mean uh, sorry, not hardware. I mean analog synth. <clears throat> Okay, so what would be interesting to show, there's like this little middle part here after that. I actually wanted to introduce the most important thing here. Um, so let me put it like this, basically everyone can do what I, what I did here, right? It's nothing really like special, you just have these little lines going on D minor, Hans Zimmer would be happy, and... Um, we just have this little automation going on, blah, blah, blah. But what makes this really special, I think, is this patch that is going on on top. And there is a lot of, is there a lot of processing happening? Yes, this is crazy, kind of. Okay, this is what the final, what the result is. Let me just play that part again here. Okay, so you, you know what I'm talking about. So let me just play this track soloed. So it also sounds like nothing special, but the thing is, I can say it's totally unique, you know, because nobody will never ever be able to create something like this, maybe recreating, but not exactly like this. So the first thing I have on top is archetype. Let me just, let me just play you how it sounds without everything, because there's a lot on top here. Uh, sorry, this is how it sounds. Well, basically nothing. So let me just turn on archetype. It's too too quiet. So you can already see that there is.
But there's October going on. And you can also see some automation here um, with a volume that I was just ramping this up a little bit. So the next thing that I've used was a little bit of compression here. So we add a little bit of, you know, gluing this, this thing, all the effects, the octaver, the signal and everything together. Next thing. We have an EQ on top that minimizes, you know, makes it like more mid-range. So this is basically what I'm talking about when you clean up your mix, you know, because I didn't need anything below 50 hertz. So I just cut this away. Also, I just did a little ramp here uh, above 10k because... Okay, next thing. We have Gatekeeper on top. Then the next plugin is super massive again. It's some kind of funny chorus, choral, choral, chorus delay. And then we have another Another compressor on top that brings up the volume. And then again, we have Valhalla Shimmer on top that kind of like, you know, creates this washy atmosphere. So it's not really there. It, it's just somehow floating in between all the other stuff. I would, if if, if I would a b, uh, if I would mute it. You would hear that there is something missing. So, okay. So next on this pad, it's just like the, the musician's ego is coming through. You just want to become a little bit more, you know, creative, not but just staying on, on D and coming up with some um, cool chords. So because I just wanted to have everything sounding unusual, uh, I've used strings, but I just used uh, the Sordino patch here by, of, um, uh, of uh, Araya. And it sounds like this. No. Just turn off that. And you also hear that I'm modulating this really to the top. And there is a lot of funny stuff going on here too. So let me just, I'm, I was processing <laughs> the hell out of all that stuff here. So, I mean, not, not saying that I, you, you know, they're of course more crazy uh, sound uh, people, you know, that, that do stuff, but I was just using for my, for my, taste i was using a lot of plugins on that session so this is what i just did to the strings so we have a little dip here uh let me just bypass all of these here so i just wanted to have the consordino uh strings sounding even more consordino by just getting rid of that uh, of that thing here Sounds a little bit more silky. And you hear that little atmosphere in the back. So this is uh, timeless too.
So I like that silky boost coming up at the end. And to be honest, when you just get, uh, if you get the pleasure to get cinematic rooms, because it sounds really amazing, uh, if you just load, if you just load the plugin and you just listen to the first patches, Amethyst or Amethyst Hall, and It's just it's just awesome. You just turn it on and it sounds good. I really love that when a plugin does something like this, you know. The worst is when you just open it and you hear nothing. You just have to figure out how to connect things to make it work. So um, the next thing here, because I wanted to go this unusual way and I layered everything with a diva pad. So it's basically the same uh, the same notes happening, but with this, I don't even know what patches it, it is. Well, Sunbright. Uh, says on top. I was just looking through the list. Okay, it's still connected here. I select it and it sounds like this. No processing. Hey, butt knuckle. So now you, when you listen to these patches, it sounds like this. and so on. Um, I also used Repro again for the melody here to just came up and this is uh, to, to, to just, you know, hold on to the to the melody I was using before. And this is what I find so very important. You hear that melody in the beginning here. I think I even, no, I just, I didn't put it in this patch here. So in a sense, it's still da, 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 ba, ba, ba. yeah, something like this. And then it starts over again here. It's the same melody. And I just have this funny curve of it because this is how it sounds. But I just wanted to have it like really small doing nothing. Uh, you know, not interfering with anything lower and higher, and just keeping it that mid-range. And there is also a funny thing. I just we we featured this one a few months ago, Ethera Gold. I was just using the gold, uh, the the core synth, and it does something funny. This here. So it's kind of like that musical that sound for for this little device when when the the uh the astronaut girl here is um you know scanning for 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 a uh, fertile ground it's it's not even there you know but in the combination with the guitar it it kind of sounds really complex and funny and uh, yeah, that's it. Basically, I just put some, I felt like there is something missing. So I put these mosaic bass and uh, patches here. There's also no processing going on. So you get like this general sound here. Hey Max, nice to see you. And Seven Tears of Hope via Discord chat. That's really cool. That's amazing technology. So I have my Discord channel and somebody's writing on that Discord channel and you can read it in the in the Twitch live stream. This is funny. Um, okay, so next up we just have my little, you know, that little, little part here. Wait, the, 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 the where it just goes wrong, you know, that there is no fertile ground. And this is like the story of this entire thing that she's looking over. And now you hear that atmospheric part starting that she sees something. There is something going on, you know, something in the scanner happening. And then she goes over to this and putting her hand into this. And it's just kind of like, like a, like a, 
like a fluid or something and then it turns out to be like what she was scanning for what she was not finding at first that this is kind of like the atmosphere or the yeah the atmosphere of that planet that she was looking for and uh, then she starts putting that you know that how, how do you say i don't know what it is like I mean, it doesn't exist, you know, like something where you make make plants grow, <laughs> and then she's just able to do like terraforming on that planet here. Um, and when you just and this is actually just in case if you didn't get this at the very end, she just goes through that through that cloud again, and it turns out that actually the entire atmosphere is made up of these little checkpoint which is basically the company, you know, like these um, RBG, uh, you know, color scheme or whatever, you know, so it's basically like something like a TV uh, screen. I, I did that as a, as a kid very often that when you're just like, I don't know, young and stupid <laughs> and you just had your hair, when I, when I still had hair, you know, when you just went on the TV screen and it, it sizzled a little bit and you're looking like really close. You could see like the red, the green and the blue dots. So, okay. So anyway, so um, here is kind of like that. I just wanted to get a little bit sophisticated again because I could or because I was allowed to. And so I came up with that thing where you have Araya playing again. Then you have this. We have... Um, Contemporary drama kit by a uh, uh, toolkit by Spitfire. So I just felt like this sounded cool for this little bit of wobbly fluid atmosphere. And also you can hear that with the with the consordino strings, the Araya consordino strings, and also I used a hive pad, which I again then put into, you know, like applied a few effects on this one here. There is a little bit of um, filter freak going and a little bit of timeless. And now my screen is packed and it sounds like this. Let me just play that on, on its own here. And this is how it all sounds together here. And then you have that final part. This is basically everything that is that is kind of like worth showing. At the very end, you have some junk XL brass here, uh, the trombone 12 horn patch. I just love it. I just stacked Mercados and Sustain like I always do. And layered this with a, with a Nexus pet here. Uh, it's just some analog meets digital thing. I'm not really sure if there's any processing going on. We have a little bit more. No, there's actually, yes, just a little, little bit of EQ here. That's a funny curve. That's a dodgy curve. So this is how it sounds. This is what I did. So this is also a typical example. I think what I wanted to go for is just make space for the horns because this is what, I, what I'm talking about when you're just mixing. And I find this very important <clears throat> to understand. Most, like the, the, the main frequency of, of the, uh, actually the trombones, is it's not really horns. Well, there's also, I think, a horn somewhere in here. Yes, but horns typically sound like not really like the brightest, but the most, like the boldest or the most majestic around 500 hertz. And this is why I just wanted to make space for the horns and the brass in general. Oh, sorry, no.
I'm, I'm not really sure if you can hear that, but it feels like the trombones have more space to breathe when I just do this curve. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And last but not least, we have another pad here that does this. Just like a regular trans pad. Okay, so that's basically this thing. And last but not least, I created like a nice melody at the very end, which is a mixture of strings and uh, synth and also children choirs and sopranos. And the great thing is I just used Choir Essentials by Stretsov, which is, I think it was on Enterprise for 99 uh, bucks. It's now, I think, 119 something. So that's pretty cool. And this entire melody, the combination sounds like this. So there's also lots of stuff going on, a little bit of EQing here, otherwise it would sound like this. So I can really see, I mean lit literally see, uh, how it gets rid of that low frequency that would be necessary for the sub bass and the bass patches. And if you just use multiband compression, if you use limiting, then the limiter is like, oh, there is some signal here, so I have to just you know negotiate with a with a with a sub synth or the synth patches, and you just have to, as I said, neg negotiate neg negotiate with what he needs the space or the bits for to just process it, so to say, to put it in a simple, you know, context. So I just did this. It basically cleans everything above. I mean, this is... So basically cleaning up a little and then what is also on her, on there... Compression, it also sounds a little bit over compressed, but when you listen to this in the mix, it gets really busy at the end here. And that's it, basically. We also have some nucleus strings, spiccato strings going on here. What do we have here? So I just wanted to create, right, there is a little bit of, of air EQ, a little bit 7 dB, uh, air EQ on top and compression. And also we have some doubler. It just added this weird effect of just kind of like spreading, spreading shit up. Yeah, and so also you have the guitar going on. And what I really love is uh, Abbey Road One. I just I don't I just love that library. It's just one patch. So, yeah, so at the end there is some sound design happening, but I felt, and it was okay with, with Pavel, he did this at the end for the effects.
But I just felt there was something tonal missing. So I just offered, you know, just if we just can put a downer in here and some su sub hit and a little ramp, like a whoosh uh, by Devastator. And then it's... So we put it both together and he agreed he didn't have a problem with that, um, which is pretty cool because I really love to just combine, uh, you know, sound design and music. And also I would love to create space sometimes for the sound design and then come with, to the music and not do like this typical Mickey Mouse thing. This is what the sound effects are for. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that was a little bit of insight uh, in that project. I, I hope it was a little bit interesting and um, about you know, like getting crazy <laughs> by using all kinds of instruments and, and layering this together and totally come up with something that that sounds unique, uh, you know, 